breaking news this afternoon. We have new details today about a deal to complete the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. The state steps in to shut down a Fleming County daycare after abuse allegations. Two people in Boyle County are still alive and firefighters say it might be because of the neighbor. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. It is a major new chapter in the ongoing Centerpoint project. Just hours ago, we learned a New York investment group is taking it over. The original developer, Dudley Webb, tore down part of Main Street in 2008 to make way for the building. Construction didn't begin until last year and came to a halt this spring. WKYT's Miranda Combs is live in downtown Lexington with the breaking details on the deal to finally get Centerpoint finished. Miranda? Yeah, Amber, the city has been looking at this spot for seven years, and a guy that just came here two years ago quickly said, enough is enough. Having a hole in the center of downtown is, is not just uh, aesthetically a blight, but it's an economic blight. And, um, you know, we are incredibly excited and privileged to have the opportunity to, to invest in Lexington and make a difference in downtown. Matt Collins is the new investor of the Centerpoint project. His dad is Lexington native Tim Collins. Collins teamed up with the founder of Bridgeton Holding, a real estate investment firm out of New York. What's exciting about this project in Lexington is that, you know, unlike my other development projects, really can't make a true ongoing catalytic impact for a very long term, which this can which makes it very exciting to us. The Webs, they say, will have a minority economic stake in the project, but they plan to move forward with the same concept. We are calling the shots. We have all the control going forward um, and, you know, a, a large uh, financial stake, obviously, as well. And that will include any changes they see fit moving forward. Now, coming up at 6, Collins had an interesting answer when I asked what makes his promise different than the Webbs. We'll have that for you coming up at 6. For now, we're live in Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Miranda, thank you. We have more information about the new development firm taking over Centerpoint. Bridgeton Holdings is based in New York. It operates more than 60 properties in 12 states, ranging from office, retail, hospitality to residential. This will be its first venture here in Kentucky. The state has closed a Fleming County daycare over allegations of abuse. And those include accusations that staff members locked a child in the bathroom and wouldn't let the child out. WKYT Sam Smith is tracking the investigation in a story that's new at 5. The state issued an emergency suspension to World Class Kids Learning Center on July 30th and it was ordered to close that same day. The Cabinet for Health and Family Services Division of Regulated Child Care made the call. The letter sent to the center lists allegations saying the center failed to assure the health, safety, and comfort of children in care. The agency says an employee at the center put a four-year-old in the bathroom whenever the child got in trouble and the worker wouldn't let the child out. The letter says on a daily basis, one employee would supervise the children during staff break times and that the center wasn't conducting proper background checks on staff. Shaylee Glass runs the daycare. Her license has been suspended by the state. I spoke with a woman that says her kids were abused at the daycare. She wants to see employees here charged. Any of the workers who did it need to pay for it. Because even if they didn't physically do it, they were there. They seen it happen. Now, as for any criminal charges, Kentucky State Police are continuing their investigation into the allegations that have happened here. And any charges would come when that investigation is over. In Fleming County, Sam Smith, WKYT. In order for the daycare to reopen, the center would have to go through an appeal process, but the state has not received an appeal. We tried to reach the owner of the daycare for comment, but we were not successful. A couple escaped their burning home early this morning, all thanks to a neighbor. The fire happened on Alta Avenue in Boyle County around 4. The neighbor woke them up and alerted them to the fire. WKYT's Mike Linden talked to the man whose quick thinking saved two lives. Danville Fire Department officials say early Tuesday morning, a home on Alta Avenue caught fire. Paul Reed lives across the street. I kind of sat up in bed and I thought, 
That smells like smoke. Reed says just after 4 o'clock this morning, he woke up to the smell of smoke coming through his air conditioner on the second floor of his home. He says he initially thought it was his house on fire. That is until he looked outside. I kind of walked across the street real quick and I was dialing 911 as I walked. Firefighters say two people were inside the house at the time of the fire. Reed says when he got up to the front door, which was unlocked, he says instinct took over. So I kind of stepped inside and I just started yelling. It's just like, is there anyone here? Your house is on fire. Is there anyone here? Both people inside the home were not hurt. Danville Fire Marshal Doug Simpson says Reed's actions were life saving. I don't know a whole lot about him other than he did rescue the two occupants or at least initially alerted them and helped them get to safety. Probably if it wasn't for him, the outcome would probably been a lot different. Reed says he would do it all over again. And he hopes others would do the same for him. It wasn't an easy thing to, you know, to go up on that porch and step inside of that house. It, uh, you know, but you would hope that anyone could do it. In Boyle County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Fire officials say the smoke detectors inside the house were not working, and the cause of that fire is still under investigation. Police do not have plans to continue their search for a body in the Kentucky River. They combed the waters near the Valley View Ferry yesterday after receiving a tip. Hours of searching turned up nothing. Police say they won't be back on the river unless new information comes up in the case. Well, it is still summer, but you might mistake the weather for fall. That's right. We have a blast of September like air moving in. Who knew that was going to happen? WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's here. He's been talking about the new normal. You just never know, do you? Yeah, we get the ups, we get the downs. A lot more downs so far this year. We will take that and run with it, though. But for the next several days, yes, that blast of September we've talked about for a while is on the way. Let's look outside and we can show you what we are dealing with with a little bit of isolated shower action in the parts of northeastern Fayette County. That may be impacting a couple of yards. 80 degrees right now, humidity 62%, but it's that northwesterly wind drying the skies up, drying that humidity up that we've had for the better part of the summer, and it's also going to knock those temperatures down. Defender now tracking nothing that is out there in Lexington. That little shower we had on the northeastern side of Fayette County has dissipated on us, and we were seeing that on our live sky cam. Southeastern Kentucky had some rumbles of thunder a little earlier right now. About all she wrote, a couple of raindrops across parts of the Howe Rogers Parkway. The flow continues to come at us from northwest to southeast. There's a little weak boundary in a northern Kentucky right now. Behind that, as it drops in from north to south, you get that cooler and drier air. So your weather headlines, temperatures start to fall, already seeing that September air moves in. And, of course, already looking toward the weekend, especially for the kiddos that are out there getting ready to start the first day of school, which we'll have a forecast for them as well, guys, coming up here in just a few minutes. A final goodbye today for a Kentucky State Police Trooper killed in a car crash. Our county by county coverage begins in Hardin County, where funeral services were held for Sergeant David Gibbs. He died last week when he lost control of his cruiser on a wet, sharp curve in LaRue County. Hundreds of people showed up to honor him at Elizabethtown Church this afternoon. He was buried at Rineville Baptist Cemetery. In Kenton County, state police have released the name of an officer involved in a deadly shooting. State police say that Ellesmere officer Michael Metzger shot and killed a man last week. Metzger is a two-year veteran of the police force. He responded to the home for a report of a stabbing. A woman inside the home was badly injured and later died. Two children were also in the home, but they were not hurt. Investigators say they have uncovered a crime ring in eastern Kentucky and recovered more than $100,000 worth of stolen property, including several commercial vehicles. Jennifer Palumbo is at the live desk for us with details in this crime tracker report. Jennifer? Amber, Perry County Sheriff's deputies got a tip about a chop shop operating near the Perry Knott County line, selling parts from some expensive commercial vehicles. That includes a white Freightliner truck that had been stolen from Pulaski County. They found it at the home of 26 year old Ryan Stacy in the Airy community. They arrested Stacy. They say it's a costly crime for the businesses because they have to replace the vehicles and all the stolen parts. You know, you may have a $5,000, $10,000 deductible. Anyhow, insurance and stuff, the premiums are very high. So, uh, you know, I mean, this is something that can actually put a small business out of, out of business. 
Deputies also tracked down a Peterbilt wrecker stolen from Tennessee. They say it had been sold to a trucking company here in Kentucky. The wrecker body on that's worth about $35,000. It's estimated it could cost the businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars to replace the two trucks. Investigators tell us Ryan Stacy was in the trucking business. They believe he was using some of the stolen parts to fix his personal tractor. At the live desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. Jennifer, thank you. So far, Stacy is the only suspect charged in the case, but police are also looking for James Eric Everidge.